Everybody say, be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. That even sounds, that even feels good when we say it, doesn't it? Title of the message tonight is Beside the Still Waters. I heard somebody say recently, whatever happened to Beside the Still Waters? And I knew exactly what he was getting at. Everybody's so frustrated and so stressed out in such a big hurry. There's such a lacking of peace among most people. Whatever happened to beside the still waters? Psalm 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. He makes me lie down in fresh, tender, green pastures. You know, sometimes he has to make us lie down, doesn't he? Is there anybody in this building that knows what I mean by that without further explanation? We're not talking about taking a nap. I mean, sometimes our circumstances just get so strong that there's no place left to go but on our face, seeking God. We get so worn out trying to solve our own problems that we finally lay down at His feet and ask Him to do something about our lives. Don't you wish that it didn't take us so long to get smart? He leads me. Everybody say, He leads me. me. Now, we're going to talk a lot about that tonight because the number one need that we hear is I need direction. And it's interesting that all over the Bible, the Bible says, He leads me. (laughs) But so many people don't really believe that they can be led by God. They don't really believe they can hear from God. And they lack the direction and the leading that they need. He leads me beside the still and the restful waters. I can tell you that God wants to bring you out of stress into joy. He wants to lead you out of stress into good health. Do you have any idea how many sicknesses are caused just by stress? Oh, the symptoms are real. But the root of the problem is stress. And you can take enough medicine to get rid of the symptoms you have. And if you still have the stress, you're going to have a new batch of symptoms. Because it'll come out somewhere. So many people are upset. He wants to lead you out of frustration to beside the still waters. He wants to lead you out of frustration into rest. Out of doubt into belief. Sometimes, you know, we just need to confront issues. Some of you have fallen off into doubting. Doubting the call on your life. Doubting if you'll get the promotion you're believing for. Doubting if you'll ever get married. Doubting if your spouse will ever change. Doubting if your children will ever change. And somebody just needs to challenge you and say, stop doubting and start believing. (laughs) Sometimes we just need to make a decision. We don't even know what's wrong with us. Satan just lays a trap for us and we fall into his trap and we're miserable and we don't even know why we're miserable. We just know that we're miserable. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and the restful waters. Verse 3, he refreshes and restores my life, my soul. Everybody say, my soul. My soul. Now, if you don't know what your soul is, it's your mind, your will, and your emotions. We're going to be talking a lot this weekend about your soul, so you need to understand what I'm talking about when I talk about your soul. Your soul is your mind. Your mind tells you what you think. It doesn't tell you what God thinks. It tells you what you think. Your emotions tell you how you feel. And your will tells you what you want. Your will doesn't tell you what God wants. It tells you what you want. And God wants to do an awesome work in our souls where our mind, will, and emotions come under His direction and His leadership. Where we begin to operate out of the mind of Christ, out of the mind of the Spirit. Where our wills are turned over to His will. And where we can begin to feel what He feels and sense what He senses. Be sensitive in our born-again emotions to what God is saying and what God... Oh, when you get born again, God is not finished with you. It has only just begun. You have a long journey ahead of you. And on that journey, you, the old man who legally and positionally died in Christ, will begin to experience that death or the crucifixion of the flesh. 
you learn to allow your soul to come under the direction of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Paul talked about carnal Christians. And the church today is full of carnal Christians. And a carnal Christian is simply a Christian who walks in their soul. They're not walking in the Spirit. They're living a shallow Christian life. Walking in their own thoughts. Their own desires. Their own emotions. Emotions have been nominated the believer's number one enemy. People more than anything tell me how they feel. People don't come to the altar and tell me what the word says. Well, I feel like nobody loves me. I feel like this. And I feel, 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 I feel. And we really do have to learn to divide soul and spirit. That's probably one of the most major things that we need in our walk with God is we really need to learn how to divide soul and spirit. We need to learn how to really discern when we're in our own soul, when we're hearing from ourself, and when we're hearing from God. So many people hear from themselves and then they try to make God do it. So many people hear from themselves and they say, well, God told me. And then they're all disturbed at God if he don't make it happen. He restores my soul. You see, from the problems that I had in my life, my soul was a mess. And some of you have been hurt and wounded, and your soul is a mess. You love Jesus, but your soul is a mess. You're out of control emotionally. You have a temper that's out of control. Just live by your feelings. You have a lot of strongholds in your mind that cause all kinds of problems because you're still thinking old ways. As long as you think old ways, you're going to have old things. The Word of God says in Romans chapter 12 that God has a good plan for our life. But that our minds must be renewed, completely renewed, or we will never see that good plan come to pass. No matter what God has for you, if you don't believe it, you're not ever going to actually get to spend it. There is an inheritance laid up for you. But how many people will ever cash the checks that have already been provided? He restores my soul. And part of the restoration of that soul is learning how to be led by the still and restful waters. You're never going to have the restoration of your soul until you learn how to wait on God. You have to learn how to be still. If there's anything that people need, they need to be still. Psalm 46.10 says, be still and know that I am God. And I believe that what, what that means is that God has an awesome plan and he wants to show his power in our lives. But God is not going to move in the midst of a bunch of Joyce Meyer's carnal fleshly activity. When I learn to wait on him and be still, then I'm going to know. The power that God has. He refreshes and restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness, uprightness and right standing with him. And I love what the Amplified Bible says here. It says, not for my earning it, but for his name's sake. Aren't you glad that he does good things for you? Not because you earn it, but for his name's sake. God will be good to you for his reputation. Because he has a reputation as a good God. And if he's waiting to find a perfect person to be good to, he's never going to get to be good to anybody. So that's why he has to have mercy. God has to first give us grace and then mercy before he can be good to us. But his mercy is new every morning. His compassions fail not. Everybody say, God wants to be good to me. Even though I don't deserve it. God wants to be good to me. Verse 4, yea, though I walk through the valley... The deep sunless valley of the shadow of death. I will fear or dread no evil. You know why I believe that we can go through hard times and fear or dread no evil? I, I just saw this today when I was preparing for this message. I believe that verse 4 has to do with verses 2 and 3. I don't believe that we can go through those difficult times in our life and be peaceful until we have learned how to lie down. And how to be led beside the still and the restful waters. Come on now. I think that's an eye opener. So many people are trying to be stable when they have difficult times. But you're never going to experience stability. You're never going to experience verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear or dread no evil. Isn't that what we all want? That no matter what's going on, we stay the same. How many of you want that kind of stability in your life? No matter what's going on, you want to remain the same. 
But I don't think we can experience that without verses 2 and 3. 2 leads to 3 and 3 leads to 4. You prepare a table. I didn't finish verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Whew. Surely are only goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And through the length of my days and the house of the Lord in his presence, they shall be my dwelling. I tell you, stress will kill you. Without quiet, without stillness. I didn't get as much quiet last week as I like. I do these seminars three weekends out of the month. And it's hard work. And I learned a long time ago when I first started doing this. I mean, I was literally killing myself physically. And God told me, you're going to have to prune your life. You're going to have to get rid of some stuff that's not bearing fruit. If you want to do all that I have called you to do. And you know how we are a lot of times. We just want to do all of everything. And you know, when God's leading you into something, he's going to have to lead you out of something. Did you hear what I said? Just as sure as I'm standing here, if God is trying to lead you into a powerful walk with him, he's going to have to lead you out of some stuff that's not doing you one bit of good. And it may be stuff you like, and it may even be good things, but that doesn't mean it's the best thing for you. And I learned that when I come back from these meetings, first of all, I've given out everything that I have to give. I preach hard. I pray for people. We minister in the gifts and just, I mean, you know, by the time tomorrow night's over, you're going to have what I've got. But I know where the source is. Amen. And so he taught me, you, you have to go home and you have, to, you have to spend time rebuilding. So many people put out, they give out energy, but they don't rebuild. And then what you do is you drain yourself till there's nothing left. And then you end up some broken down mess, not even being able to do what you've been telling other people that they ought to do. And it's not because you don't believe it. It's because you don't spend enough time beside the still waters. You don't spend enough time letting him refresh your soul. Many of you are in desperate situations and God is more than enough. And maybe when you hear that, you think, I am so tired of hearing that. What does that mean? God is more than enough to enable you to do whatever you need to do. But you have to wait on him. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Satan will fight you harder on spending good quality time with God than he'll fight you on anything else. So I came home last weekend and I usually like to take Mondays. And on Mondays, I just chill out with God. I pray some. I'll lay on my face and pray some. Sometimes for a long time. Sometimes not, you know, quite as long. I listen to, you know, really good worship music, just worship God. Sometimes I get in the word. I just like to be with him. God, this is your day. I'm just going to be with you today. But I didn't get that last Monday because I got home and right away, Monday morning, nine o'clock, got a phone call, had a problem. It was one of those kind of problems you couldn't put off. So Tuesday, something else happened. Then Wednesday, something else happened. You know, in between, I'm trying to get my time with God. I've, I've learned the hard way. I cannot do what I'm doing if I don't sit beside the still waters. You know, God can be described as a lot of things, but the Bible says that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And in many ways, God is like a deep inner silence. We need to come and, and just be with him and get renewed and come back to a place of peace. When you can feel yourself getting all upset and distraught about something, get somewhere and just get quiet for a few minutes and just draw on that peace that is in you. God lives in you. You've got a river of peace in you. Your circumstances don't have to be the way you want them for you to have peace. How many years did I spend my wheels because I was trying to get everybody out here in every circumstance to do what I wanted so I could be peaceful and happy? And then I learned that's not even really the Christian message. The kingdom of God is in you. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Not in your circumstances, in the Holy Ghost. And yes, we all want great circumstances. 
But Jesus did say in John 16, 33, in the world, you will have tribulation, so cheer up. I have overcome the world. And the more you grow in Christ, the more you know how to handle the enemy, the more of the word you know, the less you have of really just stinky bad circumstances all the time. But I don't care who you are or how much faith you got, you're going to have times when there's nothing in your circumstances that dictate to you peace. But that doesn't mean you can't have peace. And if I don't do anything else this weekend, I want to impress upon you how drastically, majorly important it is that you become a peacemaker and a peace lover. Because if you will become a person who walks in peace, lives in peace, dwells in peace, Satan, I repeat it, Satan will not be able to handle you. Rest, dwelling beside those peaceful, restful, still waters is spiritual warfare. The only way to defeat the devil is not to scream at him. I rebuked until my rebuker was worn out and I was not getting rid of the problems. <laughs> I rebuke you, I rebuke you, Satan, I rebuke you. I'm a child of God. I should not have to put up with that. But I was putting up with it. And I would even get help. I'd get other people to agree with me. Well, I just need more power in prayer here. Agree with me. I had to learn to stay in peace. There's a lot of other things I had to learn too, but... I had to learn about those beside the still waters. And I mean, I know that this is a word from God for you. Your times are in his hands. You've got an appointment with God and God sent you here because the biggest majority of you are not dwelling beside the still waters. There may be some that are. And you can just be in agreement with me and just learn even more in this area than what you already know. He leads me beside the still and the restful waters. Surely only goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Without quiet, without stillness, without rest, without that inner silence and inner peace, stress is killing people. Do you realize how many stress-related problems there are in the world today? Do you have any idea how many people are watching me by television right now that are just stressed out to the max? Do you know that stress relieving techniques and stress seminars has become one of the most profitable businesses in the world. You just do a seminar on stress and see how many people crowd into the place. Because people are majorly wanting to get rid of stress. Jesus is your stress reliever. You got stress, get saved. You got stress, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Stay filled with the Holy Ghost. Learn the Word. Walk in the Word. Dwell beside those still waters. He will refresh your soul. You cannot make it and be victorious if you don't learn how to dwell beside those still waters. You've got to have peace. You ever noticed how noisy the world is today? Peace rebuilds your energies. Quiet and stillness helps you rebuild. I told my husband, I said, I just didn't have enough quiet last week. Everybody always wants something going on. I mean, it's good to have music. It's good to have tapes. It's good to have people. But honey, you need some quiet time and you need to be by yourself sometimes. <laughs> Say, well, I can't, don't have a place. Well, Peter went up on the roof and prayed. Here's what the word still means in the Hebrew. To repose peacefully. Consolation, comfortable, ease, quiet, rest, or a resting place. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will ease, relieve, and refresh your soul. Go to Revelation chapter 7, verse 17. Now, of course, you know, this is a picture of heaven. But I believe if we operate in the right principles, we can have a piece of heaven here on earth. For the Lamb who sits, for the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to the springs of the waters of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. I think the only way we can ever quit crying about our problems is to learn to dwell beside those still and restful waters. Some of you, I mean, you know, and especially women sometimes, it's just like, well, God, I don't know what's wrong with me today, but I just, I just, you know. 
Come on, now, do you ever get like that? He's like, I don't know what my problem is, but I've just been crying all day. Well, maybe, just maybe, one of your problems is, is you haven't spent enough time beside the still and the restful waters. Can anybody relate? Now, look at chapter 8, verse 1. When he, the lamb, broke open the seventh seal, there was silence... For about a half an hour in heaven. Even heaven gets quiet sometimes. I think it's a pattern. I think we have to see this as a pattern. That we need silence. We need quiet. I believe that there are silences that we must develop in our life. I think we have to develop inner silence. I think that we have to develop mental silence. We're going to be talking about these areas tonight. I think we have to develop emotional silence. And I think that we have to develop a silence of some of our desires. Because sometimes just the things that people want so bad are the very things that steal their peace. Because they don't understand that if, it, if it's a godly desire, he will give you the desire of your heart in due time. So many times God gives a person a desire and they, they let it turn into a lust. And lust is not just connected with sexual things. Lust is anything that you want so bad that you can't be happy if you don't have it. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, if I don't get married, I just can't be happy. Well, I'm married if this man don't change, I just can't be happy. Well, if I don't have kids, I can't be happy. Well, if I can't get these kids in school all day, I can't be happy. <laughs> If I don't get a bigger house, I can't be happy. Well, if I can't have some help cleaning this big house, I can't be happy. <laughs> so you get my point. We need to develop some silences in our life. What does the Bible say in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 4, that is precious to God, the person who has that meek, gentle, quiet spirit? He's talking about inside. It's not talking about voice tone. It's talking about what's going on in you. I'll tell you one of the greatest revelations and breakthroughs that God gave me was a few years ago when he began to teach me that it was very, very important that I start paying attention to what was going on in me. Not just around me, in me. God lives in me and he wants a peaceful house to live in. What's it like on the inside of you? Does your mind ever quiet down? Are you always trying to figure something out? How many things are you worried about? What are you fretting over? What are you frustrated over? What kind of things are you anxious about? <laughs> How many emotional ups and downs do you have? What kind of desires do you have that have become so strong that they become a torment? We've got to get some things in balance, folks. I'll tell you, there is nothing more valuable to me than peace. I'm talking about, you know, within my Christian walk. And you know what I've discovered? So many people lack joy and so many people are depressed. And you know what? You cannot have joy if you don't have peace. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And I think it has to come in that order. Until a person knows who they are in Christ and they know that they've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, you're not going to have any peace. Because if you're not at peace with yourself, you're not going to be at peace with anybody else. Until you understand righteousness, you're not going to have any peace with God because you're always going to feel bad about something. You're always going to feel guilty and condemned until you know that you have been made the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Then you start to have peace. Then you can move on to some joy. You're missing the whole point that Jesus died for. If you don't have righteousness, peace, and joy, I don't care how many things you believe in without righteousness, peace, and joy, you're missing the kingdom. So that's why people that don't, even, that don't have good circumstances can still really many times enjoy the kingdom more than somebody who's got good circumstances. Because it's really what's going on in us. If you can be happy inside, you can be happy anywhere. You can be happy when you're waiting. Waiting, in, you know, for an appointment. Waiting in the airport. Waiting in a grocery store line. You can be happy if you have the right things going on in you. It's when all that upset and frustration is in us that we lose our peace and joy. And then you know what we do? We blame it on other people and we blame it on circumstances and we demand that they change so we can be settled and happy. 
And I mean, it's just like a treadmill you can't get off of. I mean, the devil loves it. And he'll just throw one thing at you after another. And as long as you think it's those things stealing your, your peace and your joy. And I know here again, I know that you, some of you have some rough things going on in your life. And I know that, but I think I can help you tonight. At least in some measure, learn how you can begin to enjoy your life more and have more peace while God is solving your. There's no reason to be miserable until the problem is solved. You might as well go ahead and enjoy yourself now. Probably one of the number one needs that I hear about is the need to hear from God. And I think one of the main reasons why people don't hear from God is because they're just too noisy. Their lives are too noisy. They don't spend time listening. The word here means to listen and to be listening. Go to Amos chapter 8. If you have a leather bound amplified Bible, it's on page 1024. <laughs> I'll help you a little. Verses 11 and 12. Amos chapter 8 verses 11 and 12. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but a famine for hearing the words of the Lord. I think that we can say that even among the body of Christ, that we have a famine concerning people and their need to hear from God. As I said earlier, more than anything that we hear, people tell us, I need direction for my life. What does God want me to do? And you know what I want to tell you tonight? You should not have to run to somebody else to find out what you're supposed to do. Because the Bible says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27, that the anointing abides on the inside of us. And the anointing will instruct us and teach us concerning what we need to do. That just means that the Holy Ghost lives in you and he'll lead you. But I don't think very many people get in contact with what God has for them because they don't know how to get still. I mean, I really believe just all the activity and the noise and just people try. How many of you think that you're probably trying to do too much in your life? I mean, that's pretty much the same way everywhere. I mean, people are just maxed out, overcommitted, committed to a lot of things that there's no anointing on, having gotten into things for wrong reasons, not because God led you there, but because your friends led you there, being frustrated about it. Wondering why you don't have any peace. You're never going to have any peace if you're spending all your time trying to do something God never told you to do. But it's amazing, really, the, the, in the natural, the uninteresting things that you can do if God told you to do it, how sweet it'll be for you. Our road team just loves what we're doing. I mean, there's no way in the natural you could, you could love being on the road all the time. I mean, you couldn't possibly love it. But God's anointing is on that for us because that's what he's telling us to do. So we're happy because we're doing what God told us to do. A lot of people aren't happy because they're doing what their friends told them to do instead of doing what God told them to do. Yeah, I'm talking to you. You all look so innocent tonight. <laughs> he said that we're going to have a famine for needing to hear the words of the Lord. Verse 12, and the people shall wander from sea to sea and from north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, inquiring for it and requiring it as one requires food, but they shall not find it. You know, you can come to this seminar and people are today. I mean, they run from coast to coast to hear the word. I mean, the first two groups of people I met, one said we're from Maryland, the next one said we're from West Virginia. And I know that people have come from long distances to this meeting because you want to hear from God. And I don't want to say to you just what I want to say. I want to give you what I believe God wants you to hear. And I'll tell you, one of the things that I think he wants you to hear is get still. <laughs> you say, you mean to tell me I drove five hours to hear that? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe that's exactly what you needed to hear. Whatever happened to beside the still waters? Where I get my soul refreshed and I get my soul restored. I got to have peace. <laughs> I tell you, I want to make you so hungry for peace that you will leave this place and say, I don't care what I got to do. I'm having peace. I'm going to have peace from sunrise to sunset. I am going to have peace. Go to Isaiah 30. Verse 19. Oh, I tell you, I love to hear those Bible pages turning. I think that's music to the Lord's ears. Oh, there they are. They're in the Word. We're going to read verses 19 through 21. Oh, people who dwell in Zion at Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. 
Well, that ought to cheer us up. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. But your eyes will constantly behold your teacher. And your ears will hear a word behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. Now, you know, for some of you, God has already told you this is the way, but you have not walked in it. Sometimes we ask God what we ought to do and he shows us and we don't like the selection. <laughs> Maybe you've been saying, God, I got to have peace in my life. I can't stand living like this. I can't stand the stress. And God has shown you to just prune off a few things. Just get out of this thing and get out of that thing. And then your mind, who loves to be active, jumps in with, well, what will people think? Well, what will they say? Well, you'll offend them. Well, you can't do that. Everybody else is doing it. You'll be the only one not doing it. Well, maybe you'll be the only one with peace. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, church. If you want to have peace, then you're going to have to get radical. And radical means you're going to have to have some radical obedience. Doing what God tells you to do. You don't go around and ask everybody to vote. You just do what God said to do. This is the way. Walk in it. When you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Everybody in this place say, I have a blood-bought right, blood right to be led by God. I can hear from God. But not unless I get still. Now, you know, James chapter 1, verse 5 says, if anybody needs wisdom, let him ask. The Bible doesn't say, try to hear from God. It says, believe that you can hear from God. And I think sometimes we try to hear from God, try to hear from God, try to hear from God, try to hear from God. One time I was so frustrated because I was trying to hear from God. I'm, boy, I'm just trying to hear from God. God, I'm trying to so hard. To, God, I'm trying to hear from you. I'm trying to hear from you, God. You're not speaking, God. I don't know why you're not speaking to me, God. I'm trying to hear from you. Don't you ever just get frustrated trying to hear from God? And you know, I remember when God spoke this to me. He said, Joyce, now this may sound, you know, radical to some of you. This is what he said to me. He said, Joyce, it's not your responsibility to hear from me. It's my responsibility to speak. And see, I think sometimes we get ourselves so worked up trying to hear from God that God's trying to speak and we don't hear because we're not beside the still waters. Ask. Say, God, I need direction. I need you to show me what to do. I need you to speak to me. And you know, one of the major ways that God leads people is by peace. Follow after peace. Let peace be the umpire in your life. If there's no peace on it, stop doing it. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Well, you know, ask God and then just go on about your business until he shows you. Well, I think he showed me something, but I'm not sure. Well, step out and find out. It won't take long, honey, and you'll know. One of our big problems is we don't want to be wrong. We are so desperately afraid of being wrong because most people already feel so wrong about themselves that they certainly don't want to think now they can't hear from God. So rather than stepping out and doing what they think that God told them to, they go check with all their friends who are not going to hear from God for you most of the time. They, are, they don't even know what they are supposed to do, let alone tell you what you are supposed to do. You need to learn how to hear from God. Not just go seminar hopping, hoping that somebody gives you a personal word. And I think it's great if you get one. I like them when I get them. I give them when God gives me to give to somebody. But hallelujah, we can hear from God. You know, I want to build in you tonight the confidence that you can hear from God. You can be led by God. He will lead you, but the first place he'll lead you is beside the still waters. And if you never get there, you'll never go any further. I know that I know that I know that some of you, if you will just start getting still, just calm down. I mean, some of you just need to calm down. I mean, just period. You just need to calm down. And then you know what? You'll know. You'll just know what you need to do. How does God speak to us? Most of the time by knowing. 
We call it the still small voice. You just know. <laughs> you just, it's just like you just know. You just know this is right or you know it's not right. But see, you get in trouble if you're operating out of your soul because what your soul wants may have nothing to do with that knowing. So when our soul gets all stirred up, Dave and I were having a deal with somebody about something last week and they wanted us to do something, let them do something that I knew, I knew that it wasn't right. And so Dave and I went and sat down and, you know, after we'd had this meeting with them and Dave said, you know, I got some things I want to share with you about this. And, and he said, it's not right. We can't let them do that. It is not right. If we let them do that, it's out of God's timing and it's going to end up hurting them. But then my soul kicked in. I didn't want them to be upset with me. I didn't want to hurt them. I didn't want to offend them. And then I started arguing to get the very thing that I already knew when I went there wasn't right. You know, sometimes we're pretty dumb. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm talking about? I mean, sometimes you'll sit and argue for something that if you just get quiet, if you just shut up and get quiet, you'd already know, I don't even want this. Why am I arguing to get it when I don't even want it? Because our soul gets in there and we just get so full of this thing, you know? It is amazing sometimes the peace that we give up just because we operate out of the soul instead of just doing what we know. You know what? We're not nearly as dumb as we act sometimes. I mean, I can tell you the truth. A lot of you are hearing from God a whole lot better than what you think you are. And Satan's got you convinced that you can't hear from God. And I am telling you tonight, you can hear from God and you do hear from God and you can be led by the Holy Ghost. Because the anointing abides on the inside of you and God will lead you and direct you. But the first place he's got to lead you is beside the still waters. If you never make it there, you're never going to get the rest of the way. How many of you understand this tonight? First, you've got to be led beside the still waters. Demand in your life that you have a certain amount of quiet time. I don't care what you have to do. If you've got to pay a babysitter so you can sit in your house by yourself. I'm serious. I mean, I am as serious as I can be. If you have to, go get in your car and go to the park. But do something so you can have some quiet time. And I'm not even necessarily talking about praying time or reading the word time. I mean, we need time for all of that. But tonight we're talking about just quiet time. I think you'd be amazed if some of you just slow down. I just feel real strong. Some of you are just like, you're running and running and running, going from thing to thing to thing to thing. Your mind is just full of all this stuff all the time. Inside your brain, it's like a freeway in there. <laughs> and you know what I found out? When I don't have any mental peace, then my emotions start getting. You know, I think people love these meetings so much. You get the peace of God on you. You get in the praise and the worship and you get in the atmosphere. It's like, <sighs> but you got to live out there. And I'll tell you what, Jesus died so we can enjoy our lives, so we could have peace and joy. Not so we could just be miserable and be tormented all the time. He leads me beside the still and the restful waters. Now, go to Exodus chapter 14. Say, God wants to lead me. God wants to lead. Speak to yourself a minute. Say, be still, my soul. Be still, my soul. Exodus 14, 13. And Moses told the people, fear not, stand still. <laughs> you know, the Egyptians were closing in on them from behind and the Red Sea was in front of them. I would imagine they were a little bit upset. Their soul probably was not still. And they needed to hear from God. They needed direction. But the first thing he told them is get still. Be firm, confident, undismayed. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. And this is what you shall do. You shall hold your peace and remain at rest. Oh, glory, 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 glory. See, some of you in your problem, oh, what, shall, what, what, what can I do? What am I supposed to do? God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? You know, if God wants you to do something, he'll tell you. And if God's not telling you anything to do, then don't go trying to make something up. You know, that gets people in so much trouble just trying to do a bunch of stuff, trying to get rid of their problem. 
Only God can handle your enemy. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and you shall remain at rest. Because you know what happens when you have a big problem and you hold your peace and you remain at rest? That says to God, I'm trusting you. Do you realize that our actions many times speak louder than words? I can say I trust you, God, but then if I'm all upset, then my actions have already said I'm not trusting you. But if I hold my peace and I remain at rest, then the Lord will fight for me. The battle belongs to the Lord. Take your position. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you this day. And the enemy which you have seen today, you will never see again. And while you're waiting for God to deliver you, you can enjoy your life. But the devil will tell you you shouldn't do that. You should at least worry. I mean, if you don't cry every day about your problem, that's not very holy. They're not crying in heaven. The more I preach about rest, the more restful y'all are getting. Right? <laughs> Verse 15. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Then he starts giving them instructions. Lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea, divide it. The Israelites will go through on dry ground. But they did not get that direction from God until they first got still. When they were fearful and upset, it wouldn't have mattered what God said. They wouldn't have heard it. You have to be very careful when you have problems because the first thing that comes with problems is upset. As soon as we don't get what we want, here comes upset. And then we're like, I got to hear from God. I got to hear from God. I don't know what to do. I need to hear from God. But you're not going to hear from God till you calm down. Because <laughs> he's going to speak in that still, small voice. And you know, sometimes God speaks things to us that we don't want to hear. Sometimes before he can lead us out of trouble... He has to show us something we're doing that got us in trouble. Uh-oh. Go to Job chapter 36. Poor old Job. Well, poor old Job got doubly blessed in the end. Because he finally heard from God. And some of you are about to get doubly blessed. If you'll hear from God... And start doing what he says, not what you want, what you feel, what you think, and what all your friends tell you. Job 36, verses 5 through 10. Behold, God is mighty, and yet despises no one, nor regards anything as trivial. I love that. No matter how trivial your problem is, he's concerned about it. He is mighty in power of understanding and heart. He does not prolong the life of the wicked, but he gives the needy and afflicted their rights. He withdraws not his eyes from the righteous, the upright, and those in right standing with God, but he sets them forever with kings upon the throne and they are exalted. And if they are bound in fetters of adversity and held by cords of affliction, might as well say if they have trouble, watch what happens. Verse 9, then he shows to them the true character of their deeds and their transgressions, and that they have acted arrogantly with presumption and with self-sufficiency. And he also opens their ears to instruction and discipline and commands that they return from iniquity. Sometimes when we have problems in our life and we need to hear from God, we have to be open to God, not only to showing us how to get out of it, but we have to be open to God to showing us how we got into it. Because if we never hear from God how we got into it, even if he comes by his miracle working power and gets us out of it, we will go do the same dumb thing again and get ourselves right back into it. So many people just want miracles. And man, I mean, who don't love a miracle? I mean, we all love that. But God is not always going to be, de be delivering you by some miracle. You're going to see some of that in your life, but that's not the way you're going to live your ordinary everyday life. You're going to live by wisdom. You're going to learn how to do the right thing. You're going to learn how to listen to God and do what God says. And when you, when, and you know, not all trouble is caused by something we got ourselves into because the devil just attacks sometimes. But honey, sometimes God wants to show you how you got in before he takes you out. Thank you for your excitement. <laughs> you have to understand if you don't know how you got in, then even if God gets you out, you'll get right back in again. God wants to speak to you. But he's not always going to speak to you what you want to hear. And sometimes when God says something to us and we don't want to hear it, we, well, that's not God. It's amazing how quick we can throw something off if it's not what we want to hear. 
I teach about the Israelites and how they spent 40 years wandering around the wilderness trying to make an 11 day trip. 40 years trying to make an 11 day trip. Why did they do that? Because they were not listening to God. God was speaking, but they were not listening. God said, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain. They went around and around and around and around the same dumb mountain. And I believe they were praying, oh God, God, we need to hear from you. God, we don't understand. God, show us what's wrong in our lives. God, deliver us. God, have you forgotten about us? Oh God, we need to hear from you. And God would speak something. And if you're anything like I was, if God would speak to me what I didn't want to hear, I'd rebuke that and go one more time around the mountain. <laughs> I tell this all the time, but I will never forget this. I remember when I very first got baptized in the Holy Ghost and really started loving the Word of God and studying the Word. And I mean, I just thought my husband was a mess. And I, one day I was praying for him to change. I mean, I'd learned how to pray by now and I was down on the floor just praying for Dave to change. And God brought a little truth into my life. He said, uh, Joyce, Dave is not the problem. <laughs> well, God, who is? There's only me and him. I mean... Who could it be? If it's not him, who is it? I mean, it never dawned on me that it was me. I was so judgmental, so full of myself. Do you know when you are really full of yourself, you don't listen to God? You want God to listen to you? <laughs> we need to develop some silence. Go to 1 Kings 19. Hallelujah. I'm telling you the truth. I know that I know that I know standing up here tonight. If you will get this message from God and you, and you will start having quiet time. I mean, I already know. I see it in the spirit. If you will start having quiet time, I mean, you're going to get some major breakthroughs. God is going to show you what got you in trouble and he's going to show you how to get out. God is going to show you how to handle certain people that you're having problems with. Because you are, you are handling them out of your own soul. You are doing what you think, what you want, what you feel. Well, bless God, I'm not putting up with you any longer. If you think you're going to talk to me like that and get by with it, you've got another thing coming. Come on now. And you just keep going through the same thing over and over and over and over. Going around and around the same dumb mountain. Get quiet and God will show you something that only he knows. When you get quiet, God begins to give you his secrets. But secrets are quiet things. What do you do when you want to tell somebody a secret? You don't shout it from the housetops. You get in their ear. Shh, come here. I want to tell you a secret. God wants to tell you secrets. But not till you get quiet. How many, how many of you already know tonight that this is for you and you need to spend more quiet time? Yeah. It's so wonderful. <laughs> Just get that soul calmed down. Church, we got to get our soul calmed down so we're not hearing from ourselves. I spent too many years of my life hearing from me. I don't want to hear from me anymore. I want to hear from God. But you know, then we have to be willing to be obedient because it doesn't do God any good to speak if we're not going to do what he says anyway. So sometimes God's not saying much to people because they have not come up into any levels of obedience yet. I mean, they're still in kindergarten concerning obedience. God's not going to tell you what to do about the current issue if you've not obeyed him the last time he told you. First Kings chapter 19. Elijah was in kind of a mess. He had just had a great victory, but now he was being chased around by Jezebel. <laughs> and he was not happy about it. He probably needed a little more quiet time. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not going to read this whole thing because it gets long, but I mean, let's start in verse nine. It says, and then he came to a cave and I mean, he'd already been, you know, out in the wilderness and wanted to die and. You know, all these different things. If you're not familiar with this story, then you need to just read it yourself. Elijah was a great prophet of God, a powerful man of God. Jezebel was a very wicked woman and he had just killed a bunch of her prophets and she wasn't happy. He would killed a bunch of Baal prophets. So now she's chasing him around saying, I'm going to kill you. And, you, know, I, I, you know, sometimes when you just get too tired, your faith don't seem to work right. I mean, that's the truth. I have found out, you know, that if I'm too tired physically and I'm not getting the right amount of rest physically, it'll affect my faith. 
Hello? We need to say that again. Some of you are wondering why your faith don't work or why I'm so weak in faith. And I just feel like I have a word from the Lord right now. It's just because you stay too tired physically all the time. I, I mean, I know that standing here right now. That whoever that's for, if you'll pay heed to what God is saying to you right now, you will see radical changes in your faith. You know, when I'm tired, I don't even want to pray. And even if I do, it's more like labor instead of joy. And I really don't feel like it's doing much good. And it's because when you're, when you're tired, you know, faith is a force. It's, it's an energy. And you need to be strong and healthy to walk in faith. You can't be all worn out all the time and never getting any rest. You know, there are even people that are out trying to work two and three jobs just because they want more money. And I'll tell you, some of you would be much better off to do with a little less money and have a lot more peace. Money, money can't buy you peace. But we're talking about here tonight in this meeting, you cannot go by across any counter in this town. But peace is so valuable. Oh, it's so valuable. Hallelujah. We got to have peace. So, you know, Elijah was upset. Who knows? I mean, he'd just come off of this big thing with killing all these prophets. He's probably tired. Maybe he hadn't had time to rebuild his energies yet. I don't know. But the angel of the Lord, you know, ministered to him out in the wilderness. And then he finally got up and he ate and he drank and started on his way toward the mountain of God. And in verse 9 it says, And then he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, well, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I only am left and now they're seeking my life to take it away. And I don't think, you know, I, I think that we can just conclude. I'm not trying to put words in here, but I mean, let's just say for the, you know, for the sake of just knowing that he was a person. You know, the Bible says in James that, that he, Elijah was a man of like passions, just like us. That means he didn't do everything just right. He had a soul just like just like we have a soul. And, you know, since he was running and fearful, it was obvious he probably was upset. Verse 11, he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and a strong wind rent the mountain and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of gentle stillness and a still, small voice. You know, I think that sometimes the earthquake and the storm and the wind and the fire and all this commotion is in us. And maybe all these things, the fire, the wind, the earthquake, maybe those were representative of things that was going on in him. And until he got calmed down to where he could hear that still small voice, he didn't get any new direction because what happened was Elijah had done the thing that God had told him to do. Now he needed new, new direction. And if you go ahead and read the rest of this, after he heard the still small voice, he got new direction. And I believe that some of you need new direction and you need to understand that God wants to give you new direction. You're at the end of some things, but understand this. The end only brings you to new beginnings. Instead of looking at it like it's the end of everything, look at it like it's the beginning of everything. Go over to 1 Kings 17. I mean, I'll tell you, when you're hearing from God, when everybody else is having problems, you'll be on top. And we better learn how in these last days to hear from God because we may not have our needs met by natural means. So it's important now to learn how to hear from God. You don't want to wait till you're over your head in trouble and try to hear from God. Elijah the Tishbite of the temporary residence of Gilead, I'm in verse 1, said to Ahab, as the Lord, the God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew or rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, go from here and turn east and hide yourself by the brook Sharif east of the Jordan, and you shall drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens there to feed you. Say, God spoke to Elijah. And God will speak to me. Everybody else was in famine. But Elijah, the man of God, was out by the brook, by the still waters, being fed by the ravens. We don't have to live in fear. We can believe that God will lead us and guide us and show us what we need to do in every situation.
but we got to get still. But sometimes the direction of God changes. Verse 4, you shall drink of the brook that I, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he did according to the word of the Lord. He went and dwelt by the brook Sharith east of the Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. Uh-oh. Verse 7, after a while the brook dried up. Some of you are at that place where you feel like your brook dried up. <laughs> You had a direction from God and you were doing that and now the brook has dried up. You need to be sensitive enough to know when the brook has dried up. Some people aren't that smart. They keep staying at a dry brook. You may even be going to a church or, or be involved in a ministry that at one time was exactly the place where you needed to be. And now God's saying it's time for something else. I tell you, we get rooted and grounded in things when we ought to stay rooted and grounded in God. I mean, if you go with the flow that God's got for your life, you're going to have peace and joy. The brook dried up. God spoke to him again. And you know what? The things that God told him to do were probably a little hard for him to do. But they were the things that kept him, kept his needs met during those times. The next thing God told him to do is go and find this little widow who was poverty stricken. And he said, she'll feed you and take care of you. Well, I don't know, God. That don't sound like a very good idea to me. I mean, he got there and she was ready to die. She was, you know, well, all I got is enough for one last meal and then we're going to die. She already had it figured out. Depressed and ready to die. And God sent him to her. See, so, some of you, when you get direction from God, you pay too much attention to how it looks. And you really believe it was God. It's like, well, I really believe this is you, God. I mean, I just down in here, God, I really believe it's you. But it sounds so corny or it seems so ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, that doesn't look right. Nobody else is doing that. You got to follow your heart. I can't tell you how many people come to me and want to know how can I get my ministry started. What did you do to start your ministry? I said, it wouldn't do me one bit of good to tell you what I did. God will not lead you the way he led me. We're always wanting to go to somebody else and get a formula. And you know what we want? We want formulas to replace the fresh word of the Lord. You don't need somebody's worn out formula. You need to hear from God yourself about what he wants you to do. And I want the spirit of God tonight to break the fear off of you that you can hear from God because you can hear from God. God will speak to you, but not until you get quiet. Let's talk for just a minute before we close about these silences that we need to develop in our lives. Mental stillness. Proverbs 3, 5 through 7. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your path. People say, I need direction. First thing God tells you to do is get some stillness in your mind. Stop trying to figure it out. Reasoning. You have any idea how many people just, they just rotate their mind around and around and around every problem, never getting quiet mentally for a minute? That's such a good scripture. Trust the Lord with all your heart and mind. So many people say, God, I trust you. And they spend all their time trying to figure out what to do and, and, and worrying. So you're not trusting God with your mind. It's just words. It's just words if we don't get quiet mentally. I'll tell you what, you're looking at a woman that was addicted to reasoning. I mean, I had to have everything figured out before I felt peaceful. But see, then when I got things figured out, I felt peaceful. It was really a false peace. It wasn't the peace of God. It was a peace that I produced through reasoning. And so the only way I could maintain that peace was then every time something else came along, I had to figure that out. You never run out of things to figure out. As soon as you get one thing figured out, there'll be something else for you to figure out. And then there'll be something else for you to figure out and something else for you to figure out. So maybe you should get delivered tonight from reasoning. You know, you, we have to die to that stuff. I mean, we have to say, I am not living like this anymore. I am going to have peace in my life. And I understand the night in order to have peace, I, my mind's got to get quiet. And worry. The Bible tells us not to worry, not to be angry. You know, actually, you can't find the word worry or the word anxiety in the, in the concordance. The phrase that you find is take no thought. And that's what it says in Matthew chapter 6. Take no thought for what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and what you're going to put on or what you're going to do. Take no thought.
because God will tell you what, what you need to do at the time. And see, one of the reasons why we get all mixed up about this thing about hearing from God is we want next week's information now. We want God right now to give us a blueprint for everything that's coming up that we know anything about over the next six months. Now, this could help you. If we trust God, we don't have to know today what we're supposed to do next month. We need to know today what we're going to do today. Give us this day our daily bread. <laughs> Lead me, Lord, one day at a time. What happened when they tried to store up the manna? It rotted. Some of you, I can just see it in the spirit. I mean, you're just way over here. That's what anxiety is. Anxiety means that today you're trying to figure out tomorrow's business. You're trying to live today, but your mind is in tomorrow. Where has your mind been? In yesterday, in tomorrow, live one day at a time. Stop trying to figure everything out. Say, God, I'm going to trust you. I will not, I'm not putting my mind on it, God. I believe that you're going to show me what to do when I need to do it. There's a scripture I want us to look at. Go to Matthew. Ooh, it's getting late, isn't it? Go to Matthew chapter 13. I shouldn't have told you that. Now you'll all look at how late it is. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read you this and then we're going to close up here in just a second. Everybody say, oh, it's Friday night. Don't worry about it, Joyce. <laughs> Mark 13, 11. I told you, Matthew, I meant Mark. I wanted to see if you had any discernment. I wanted to see if you could hear from God. I wanted to see if you could hear from God about where you're really supposed to go. I think there's somebody in here that you need to hear this scripture. Some of you have some upcoming things that you have to confront. You have some things that you need to say to some people. Maybe you need to talk to your boss about something. Maybe you need to talk to your spouse about something. Maybe you need to talk to one of your children about something. You know it's going to be uncomfortable. Maybe it's another relative. Maybe it's a neighbor. There's just something coming up in your life and you know that you need to confront an issue. And you're already trying to figure out what you're going to say. Well, I'll say this and this and this and this, and then I'll say this, and then if they say this, I'll say that, and then when they say that, I'll say this. And boy, if they say that, I am really going to get upset, and I'm going to tell them this. <laughs> you know, sometimes we rotate these conversations around in our brain for days and days and days, and then when we get in the...